Greetings and welcome to this edition of Positronic Hypersonic. I'm Barry P. Cook. I'm here to talk to you about the most recent episode of The Boys. It was called The Last Time to Look on This World of Lies. And as it begins, it looks like the boys are studying footage of Soldier Boy being experimented on back when he was first captured by the Russians, while Kimiko clings to life. Ashley is made Vought CEO at a board meeting which Homelander attends, and which quickly gets derailed when a well-meaning exec asks a question that Homelander didn't understand. He was quite displeased because he felt like an idiot. And so he almost went off on her, but Ashley says, yeah, why don't you just go? So she leaves. The Deep is made head of Vought's crime analytics group. So this, of course, is Homelander doing this, either to get him sort of out of the way because he's occupied with something or to make him feel beholden to Homelander or both. So that's happening. The boys then arrive home and Kimiko is taken to a hospital. Supersonic, who is also Alex, and Starlight's ex, having been killed quite violently in the previous episode, is being talked about in the press in the wake of his death, and it's being played off as a drug overdose. Huey tells Starlight about how awesome he thought being a super was, and how he teleported by clinching his butt. Now, I had thought it made him super fast. I didn't really recognize that what he did was teleport last week, but I guess that's what it does, what it, what he did. And apparently he does this by clenching his butt, which, okay. I'm not really clear why it takes him out of his clothes <laughs> when he does this. It's like he's phasing through space. And so I guess he phases through his clothes. And they didn't explain it, but that's how I would have to interpret it. Otherwise, I can't see why his clothes would fall off, but okay. Soldier Boy, meanwhile, has found some clothes and seems to be making his way to a plane, you know, after he was released and was roaming around, I guess, in Russia. Maeve delivers more temp V to Butcher and joins him for a drink, despite having been four months sober, only to have him explain that he wants to see all the soups eliminated, which, even though it includes her, apparently straight up turned her on, because next thing you know... Nina pays a visit to Frenchie at Kimiko's bedside, to give him a target to assassinate, which he wasn't pleased about. And it would seem the Kimiko's powers are just gone ever since she got zapped by Soldier Boy, which she's thrilled about. Homelander arranges for A-Train to meet with Blue Hawk, who he wanted to do something about last episode so that he can talk to him about his seeming racial bias in his crime fighting. And he agrees to try to set things right. Soldier Boy has made his way to New York City now, and he releases another blast from his person, seemingly involuntarily, which takes out a building, Oklahoma City style, and Mother's Milk reluctantly agrees to let Butcher and Huey help him bring Soldier Boy to heal in the wake of this event. A-Train brings Blue Hawk to a community center where he delivers a very ham-fisted apology for his racial profiling, but when he's confronted by the community over it, he loses his shit and straight up messes up a few members of the citizenry before A-Train can kind of pull him back. The boys go to see someone called The Legend, brilliant, uh, brilliantly played by Paul Reiser, who used to work with Vought and who it seems Soldier Boy had visited recently in order to get his super suit. Well my super suit before heading off to see Crimson Countess. Homelander, whose real name is John, apparently. I don't know if we knew that before, but I don't remember knowing it. But anyway, his name's John, because of course it is. He confronts Maeve about working with Butcher against him, and she denies it, but he, he six black noir on her, and the scene cuts away. Butcher and Huey once again shoot up with temporary V, much to Mother's Milk's dismay, in order to pursue Soldier Boy. Starlight visits Ashley to find out where Maeve is and is told that she checked herself into rehab and can't be reached, which of course is probably bullshit. <laughs> Hopefully she's still alive. At the hospital, a musical number apparently breaks out when 
Kimiko seems to get her voice back now that she's lost her powers, but it was just a daydream or a hallucination on Frenchie's part. And when he goes to get some coffee, he's approached by what would seem to be Nina's hench people. Crimson Countess is apparently cam girling <laughs> when her stream is interrupted by Butcher busting in and attacking her, while her customer, played by Seth Rogen, who apparently had a hand in creating the boys and who I really, really hope wasn't playing himself, looks on in the middle of handling himself. It seems they didn't want her taking off so that they could hand her over to Soldier Boy, so they chain her down. Before Soldier Boy arrives, Starlight shows up because Mother's Milk had called her. But then Butcher drugs Mother's Milk, I guess because he didn't trust that Mother's Milk was really down with the plan, especially after he called Starlight. And maybe because he didn't want him to get hurt because he declined to shoot up, you know, the V. Uh, I don't know. But... Soldier Boy does show up, he confronts the Countess, they have a terse conversation, and then he does his blaster thing, seemingly by choice this time, and like totally levers, uh, levels her trailer with her in it, <laughs> which Starlight is very much not happy about. And I'm starting to be concerned a little bit that this idea that Soldier Boy twinking, uh, taking out Homelander with you know, no one around to then take him out is going to leave anybody any better off than they are under Homelander. And I'm finding this plan to be a tiny bit naive on behalf of Butcher and Huey. Like, you know, if you're dealing with Lex Luthor and you want Superman to take him out, that's cool. But if, if you're dealing with Lex Luthor and you want Vandal Savage to take him out, well, now you're just, <laughs> you're going from the, the frying pan to the fire, or at least from one frying pan to another one. <laughs> I mean, I don't know that Soldier Boy is any more sane or any more rational or reasonable than Homelander is. So, I don't know, I, I mean, my impression was they were going to try to figure out how the Russians took out or, you know, took down Soldier Boy and then do whatever they did to take down Homelander. But that's not what they're doing now. Now that they've actually found Soldier Boy, they're turning him on Homelander, or they want to. And I don't think they're going to be any better off, even if he takes him out. The other thing is, what if he doesn't? <laughs> What if they team up? <laughs> what if they become a team? <laughs> now what? Like, this is not a good plan, <laughs> it seems to me. I don't know. We're going to have to see what happens. But right before this episode ends, we see Starlight plead with Huey not to go off with Butcher and Soldier Boy. But he does anyway. And she's left having to deal with an incapacitated mother's milk. So... I suspect they're not going to be an item <laughs> much longer. And I feel badly about that because I think they're both good for each other. And I think that he really loves her. I think that she cares about him. I don't know that she's as into him as he's into her. But I think they're good together. And I don't want to see them not be a couple. But I think that's where this is going. Because he's, I don't know. I want to see he's being dumb. But like, if he believes that, he's following the right course of action and that he's doing the right thing that it has to be done, then I can't fault him. But if he's doing it for the wrong reasons, more than the right reasons, because I think ultimately he realizes, yeah, the Homelander has to be dealt with. But I think part of the reason he's doing it and he even kind of says as much is that he thinks he has to protect Starlight. He thinks he has to do this to validate his manhood he just pretty much said that more than once, actually. So if that is as little as 50% of the reason, I think that's not good. If it's less than 50% of the reason, then okay, it might not be so bad. But yeah, so that's really it. Uh, I thought this was a good episode. 
the only complaint I have is that there was um, there was a very noticeable lack of anything going splat. And I very much like the splat and the explody and the guts and whatnot. And there was none of it. Which is not to say there wasn't any carnage. There was carnage, but it wasn't of the splat variety. And I, I, I really like carnage of the, spl the splat variety. So I'm hoping that <laughs> I'm hoping that they haven't already used up <laughs> their splat quotient uh, for the season because I like the splat and I want to see more splat. I'm concerned about Maeve, so hopefully she is not deceased and we're going to see what happens. I will be back with a review of the next episode once it is released. Until then, I'm going to take off and I wish you peace and long life.